two, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this. If you ever want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, the lovely patrons. Appreciate y'all patrons. Shout out to the patrons. They can send it directly on Patreon. Now, for the patrons, if you ever want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you don't have to. There's no obligation. If, if you don't want to, that's fine. But if you do want to, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Uh, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh, thank you for continuing to have this just Team Keep It Clean somewhere where we all don't share the same opinions. We don't. But we got love and we got respect for each other, regardless if we agree or disagree. So, Appreciate y'all. We got some great questions. As well. We got a lot of questions too. But we got some great ones as we always do. Let's do it. This question came from my guy Alex. He said, hey, I hope everything is going well. My question was, how long do you think Giro is going to stay as an offensive coordinator? Uh, personally, I think instead of saying the league has figured out Lamar, they should have just said they figured out Greg Roman. I feel like last year the signs were that their uh, offense was slowly getting exposed. Now with all the injuries, the flaws in the offense have shown tenfold. See, that's, that's a tricky way to look at it because... Somebody could easily say on the flip side, well, because of all the injuries, the offense hasn't got to show its full arsenal because they're not as equipped as they once were. Uh, but anyway, he said uh, he's constantly shown the inability to adjust or not stick in with what's, what, what's, well, ah, tongue twister, what's working throughout the game. Uh, you can tell without the playmaking abilities of Lamar, Hollywood, and Andrews, the current offense can easily be bottom 15. Now, that's something to think about right there. Um... Because you've seen a lot of people say they feel like Lamar is actually uh, has saved Giro, and he's uh, covered a lot of Greg Roman and just really the Ravens, period, a lot of their error with his ability. Um, the most recent games, Lamar hasn't helped with the turnovers. That's <laughs> true. And his slow decision making with the blitz and pressure, but the play calling is what is truly holding the team back. Thanks for your time and have a nice day. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good mix of everything, uh, but it, it starts at the top. Um, because if you, you, you got to put people in position to make plays. And there have been some plays where Lamar has just missed on people, whether he missed on a throw, made a bad throw, or just didn't see somebody that was wide open. Um, and there have been other plays where it's like just the development of the plays, the, uh, these long development plays where Lamar, like you got a bad offensive line already, and then you got these plays that's going 10, 20 yards downfield, and just, um, and the sequence of plays too. And just sometimes the, the play calling can just seem like it's just, it's like when you see somebody, like if you're somewhere and, and there's music playing and you're dancing, mm, 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 mm. so you're dancing to the music like that, but then you see somebody, the music's going, and they're dancing like, and you're thinking like, man, like, hold up, what are they listening to? Because we can't be listening to the same thing. And that's a lot of times, that's how it seems like the offense is. It seems like the offense is just out of tune. They're not on beat with what's going on in the actual games. So I, I, to answer your initial question, your original question, how long do I think it's going to be? I don't know because g Row is one of Hobbs guys. And oh, I think the highest chance g Row would have of leaving the Ravens would be if he got a head coaching opportunity. Other than that, I, I really think that the Ravens are going to give him a pass because of all the injuries. Next question came from my guy Greg and Beatmore. I wonder if this is from Greg Roman. But anyway, he said, hi, Engraven. I was born in 93, so I was very young when the Ravens organization started. I remember knowing uh, of the Ravens, but not really becoming a football fan until around the time Kyle Bola was a rookie, I believe. Love this franchise so much. And Greg Roman, though, I, I also think like many others, Ravens should move on from him. Amazingly, nearly no one was saying that in 2019. He gets too much hate. Uh, like I said, I watch a lot of Ravens football, and I don't mean the system because Lamar is a huge part, but the production. Roman has given the Ravens. I would have loved it when we had Ray Lewis, Terrell Suggs, Ed Reed, Jared Johnson, Kelly Gregg, Lodi Nada, Chris McAllister, and one of my favorites, Darius Webb. Shout out to Spider Man. Uh, playing. Uh, and we had so many more Ravens defensive greats. And let's not forget Derek Mason and Todd Heap and the offense, because without them, Flacco would not have been Flacco in his early years. My point is, Greg Roman is the most successful offensive coordinator for the Ravens statistically ever. And he deserves a lot of credit and admiration for that. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. And he, I feel like with Greg Roman, he was a very, very great introductory offensive coordinator for Lamar Jackson. I feel like it, it was great. It was a great way to, hey, Lamar, welcome to the NFL. Let me ease you on in here. 
But now it's time to take it up a notch. Anyway, he said, uh, however, and I know the O-line issues and running back and other injuries is not all his fault. And it has affected his, this offense. However, I give no excuse on bad timing and screen plays. And I know they all won't work, but it's just too many times being called at bad times. And this is probably a great wide receiver group and no excuse here, too. He seems afraid to use them more often. Love Roman to stay as a run game specialist. I doubt it. But Ravens need to evolve their passing game more. Running game, I love a lot. And they should make that still dominant and the main focus probably. But it's time for someone new for Lamar Jackson, at offensive coordinator. Hoping the Ravens do that soon because LJ st has still not gotten that contract. And I'm so afraid of him leaving when the rookie deal is up. It seems like that's starting to catch steam with more and more Ravens fans. The possibility of Lamar Jackson actually like being like, oh, no, I'm straight. And that, oof, that would be just all kinds of bad. And, and again, that would be bad for the Ravens as a business. That would be bad for the ravens just as a franchise that would be bad for the ravens would have to start all over again at the quarterback position all over again oh oh that would be so bad in so many ways more ways than that too but anyway he said guess my question out of all of this is if greg roman and unfortunately i think he will stay offensive coordinator next season see i that's what i'm saying too and the offense doesn't evolve more. Can you see Jackson possibly leaving? This is long. Sorry, I have a great day. Thanks for everything you do. I hope Superman Lamar Jackson the rest of the season, through the playoffs, to the Super Bowl. But that's probably asking too much of all the injuries. Uh, bye and go Ravens. Um, no, I, I, I don't. I don't see Lamar leaving. I, I, I don't. I, and again, like I always say, it's a possibility. To it ain't a possibility anymore. But I, I don't see it happening. The Ravens just they they, they can't afford him to leave. They can't. Because they would literally, like I said, they would have to start from scratch. Start from scratch. And Lamar, like, he's not only the heart of the team, this dude, even the heart of the city, man. Like, this guy is, ever since Ray Lewis, Lamar Jackson is probably, probably the biggest Raven ever. Well, you got Ed Reed, too, of course. But you get what I'm saying? Like, this dude is, he's become one of those generational Ravens. And this is only his fourth year. Like, this guy's impact on the team, the city, the franchise, the, the NFL is crazy, man. So, if, oh, they, they, they can't do that. They can't make that. They can't let that happen. Next question came from my guy, CJ. He said, I ain't great. We hope you and the family are doing great. But let's get to the question. After a tough loss, even if you agree with the two-point or don't, I personally think we should have we should have Tavon Young playing more. Uh, and even before Marlon's injury, I think we should have had Tavon out there instead of Anthony Avery. He hasn't been playing well these past few weeks. Uh, thanks, Engraven, and have a great day. Okay, I think that was more of a rant. Uh, they said Tavon was really sick. They said he was sick as a dog. Uh, so hopefully he'll be good to go for the game against the Browns coming up because yeah, we're going to need all the corners that we can get. Um, but, yeah, they just said he was it was bad. So I don't know what was going on with him. Hopefully he'll be feeling better. Um, but yeah, he just, they said he just was not in no shape to just continue playing. I think he played nine snaps. I want some, some crazy low. And then he came out the game. Cause I remember seeing him early on in the game. Then I was like, hold up, where, where'd Tay Tay go? Uh, but yeah, so he, he was too sick to play. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, realistically, we as Ravens fans knew that this type of winning was not sustainable. Football is any given Sunday. I just don't believe Harbs went for two in the Steelers game. Reasoning was said to be because Hump not being available. I'm wondering how those other cornerbacks reacted to hearing that. With that type of culture in an organization, this might be why Bateman could possibly be looking in another direction. Harbs has to play Bateman no matter what. Bateman needs to play at least 75% of the time. No injury pass for Roman, stale, slow scheme. The league has figured him out. It's been time to move on. Win now mode doesn't have slow starts. <laughs> Thanks for the channel, family. Hashtag team give it clean. Hashtag reality. Mm. Wow. So that was something right there. Not even a question. He just, he was letting it be known how he was feeling. Uh, yes, Bateman does have to play. I, I think Bateman snaps should go up. Um, and Sammy's, uh, maybe Sammy should go down. Because, again, we... Um, Love Sammy Watkins. Happy for him being here and all that. But we, it, it's, it's time for Lamar to start building that chemistry with Bateman, too. And for Bateman to get his opportunities, he should be out there more. Um, and, and with that, that he would have more chances to make something happen. Lamar would have more chances to see him and, and hit him and, and just get him involved. So I, I do agree with that. I think his snap should go up while Sammy should go down a little bit. 
Next question came from my guy Jared. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are doing well. First off, I wanted to say thank you for all that you do for us Ravens fans. Look forward to each and every one of your videos. You have made it more fun to be a fan of this team. I don't know. I feel like we probably made it a little bit more stressful. Because these Ravens, they be having us worrying. But I appreciate you, man. He said, but now to the question. With all the injuries this team has had, us struggling on both sides of the ball, the slow starts on the offense, the big plays on the defense, the coaches making questionable decisions left and right, do you think it's an overreaction to say the season is over? Yes, because it's not. You still got five games left, so yes, it's an overreaction. Uh, in my opinion, we should give the younger guys a lot of opportunities for the rest of the season. See what options we have on the defensive line other than Brandon Williams, Derek Wolf, and Calais Campbell because we knew that they out after this season. Boost some backups trade value and try to get some free agents and spots we need and some Alabama linemen in the draft. Then we can get healthy and go to the Super Bowl next season. Again, appreciate everything you do for us in Graven. I don't, know, I don't always agree with your takes on the games. For instance, I love the two-point call, but I will support you in this channel no matter what. Much love to you. Appreciate that, Jared. <laughs> so I appreciate that, man. Um, no, nah, I, I, I disagree with this because the season's not over. The Ravens have been struggling. Um, they have they, they haven't looked like a contender of a team, but their record is a contender of a team. So despite how ugly these some of these games have looked, despite how slow the offense has started in so many of the games, despite how many times the defense has ended up falling apart toward the end of some of these games, or even in the beginning of some of these games, they are eight and four. And they are the number three team in the conference, I believe, in AFC. So why would they just be like, you know what? All right, we're hurt. We're banged up, bruised up, battered. So you know what? We're the number three team in the AFC. So let's just give up. Let's, let's, let's call it a season, y'all boys. All right, just, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just tank. Just forget it. Don't even worry about the season no more. Let's play the back. No, they, they shouldn't do that because you still have a fighting chance. I just I, I never liked the idea of tanking. I never liked the idea of giving up on a season, even with all the injuries. They're eight and four. They they are very frustrating eight and four, but they're eight and four. So the fact that they're in this position right now, with everything that they've been through this season, they got to keep going. Next question came from my guy Dominic. He said, "Ain't Graven, sorry for all the questions lately, but watching this team makes you question a lot of the things that they do. Anyway, as fans, we always seem to notice things faster than the players on the field do. Well, that's because we we got a seat on a couch or on a chair, wherever you watch it from. We we get that broadcast view. The players they ain't got that broadcast view. They they see everything." In their peripheral vision, their vision right in front of them, they, they don't see it like we see it. We get to see the whole field, but the way that they see the whole field, they got to look left and right and all. We just look straight. So it's a big, much different uh, perspective. But anyway, he said, like the slot blitz, the Steelers were running all game. It, it took us three quarters to adjust. Like, that is too long. Even Tony Romo notices up in the booth as well. So why can't the Ravens coach us? Now, with that comparison, that's, that's a little different there. Um... And with, with Tony Romo, too, it's, it's less pressure on him because he's not in the heat of that battle that's on the field. He, he's a commentator, so he gets to see it how he sees it. And Ravens coaches, they uh, but it, it is obviously something that they should be paying even more attention to than Tony Romo um, and, and with making adjustments. So that's something that's kind of scary a little bit. But anyway, so my question is, why do you think it takes a team so long to adjust to what the defense is doing? And what would you like them to do less as an offense uh and more, oh, what would you like them to do less as an offense and more of as an offense? All right, so why does it, it take them so long to adjust? In my opinion, because I think the Ravens are a very uh, cocky team. They, they, they have very arrogant coaches. Um, because with the coaches, they since they've been successful, they have been. You got to give them that. Give them their credit. Sometimes if, if what they have normally been doing isn't working, they don't want to change it. They don't want to change it up. They don't want to adjust it. They don't want to switch it up. So that, that can be their downfall. And so that, that's why I think that is. What would I like to see them do less as an offense? Um, stop scoring so little amount of points. And what would I like to see them do more as an offense? Score more points. Oh, man. His next question. Uh, he said, just uh, one loss on top of another loss. Uh, at, well, we only got four. And everybody in the AFC got at least four losses. So, I mean, they're right there. But anyway. After losing to the Steelers, we found out Marlon Humphrey missed the remainder of the season, which is a big blow. With the defense somewhat getting back on track, how do you think they will fare without Marlowe? 
I think they'll be all right. I don't think they'll be locked down or anything, but I think they'll be all right. Now, more pressure has been put on their cornerbacks, Anthony Avery, Tay-Tay, Jimmy Smith, uh, Brandon Stevens. Maybe they put him back at cornerback. We'll see. Robert Jackson, uh, Kevon Seymour. So they got some bodies there. But how will the quality be? Well, we'll start to see moving forward. We just got to hope all the guys stay healthy. Um, now, Wink, I think that this could change. Well, actually, it's, again, they're pretty arrogant uh, coaches, so it probably won't change their scheme much. But I would hope that it would change their scheme, and I would hope he wouldn't be leaving guys on islands because that's, that's something that kind of scares me. And another question he had, he said, man, I just finished watching this ugly Steelers game. A lot of the blame has been in Roman these past couple of weeks, but Lamar needs to be called out. He has been missing open receivers, off-target throws, turnovers, like I don't know what the problem is. Missed opportunities cost us this game for sure as we settle for field goals twice too many. Uh, I wish we would have got even more field goals. We, if actually we would have settled for one more field goal with Lamar through the interception on the first drive of the game, we ain't even going to have a conversation about the two-point conversion because we don't need it. Anyway. He said, my question is, what do you think is the problem with Lamar? Is he trying to force things to happen or is he just overthinking or something else? Hey, a, a mix of it all. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Um, I just think the, uh, the, the way that the season was going early on, I think it just got to him. Uh, because he was always getting hit. He was always running for his life. And I think it just, it just started catching up with him mentally. So hopefully they can... Um, that offensive line can do better. He can do better. Greg Roman can do better. Hopefully, everybody can do better. I know it's asking for a lot so late in the season, but there's a chance. State of the team. Next question came from Wanya. They say, hey, what's up, Engraving? By the time you get in this email, hope you feel a little better after this horrendous loss this past Sunday. Wanted to get your thoughts on the state of this team. So far, uh, for me personally, I think we're at code red. What I mean by that is that this team is going nowhere fast uh, to being garbage. Uh, I know fans are going to keep using the injury and the winning record excuse, but at that at this point, that's what they are, excuses. Whoever's out there needs to perform, and this team has underperformed. This is an 8-4 and four team that's playing like a 4-8 and eight team. Offensively, we flat out suck. I would like Lamar to be more vocal. He's too relaxed and calm for me and have more say in the offense instead of always listening to Greg Roman. Uh, defensively, the run game is straight, but the pass defense sucks, and every time the defense gets cooked, they play sloppy and pretty much just throw in the white flag. Coaching is beyond suspect. Coaching is beyond suspect. Uh, Roman refuses to open a playbook and refuses to make adjustments when we're struggling, and he always gives the play call late, and we're always snapping with 10 seconds on the play clock, so Lamar can't read the defense in time. Defensively, Wink is too stubborn and too blitz-happy for his own good, which hurts us. In Harbaugh, he only listens to analytics instead of being a football coach. Then with EDC and free agency, he only spends money on defense, which still struggles, and a minimum on offense. This team has no true leadership, and no one holds anybody accountable for sloppy play. Lastly, I think it's time for Bishotti to bring the hammer down at the end of the year. Either terminations or demotions need to happen because at the rate we're going, that Super Bowl window is slowly closing. And before you know it, we'll never touch another Lombardi trophy again. Sorry for the long email. Just wanted to uh, let you hear this and get your thoughts on this matter. Hashtag team keep it clean. I'm out. Woo! Wow. So, definitely not a fan of what's going on with the Ravens. Now, said uh, we had a code red and that this team is going nowhere fast to being garbage. I, I disagree. I, I disagree. I feel like their their fixes are fixable. Well, maybe not the offensive line. That's that's the only one that I feel like is the hardest to fix. Uh, but Lamar, fixable. Uh, play calling, fixable. Coaching decisions, fixable. It's, it's all fixable stuff. Defense, not without Marlon Humphrey. Fixable because you, and, and not, not necessarily fixable, but as long as he puts them in, in position to succeed, all right, cool. And, and if, if they don't, okay, let, let it be on the players. That, that's one of my biggest things. If the Ravens win or lose, especially if they lose, let it have been on the players. Don't let it have been on the coaches for, oh, man, why did the coach do this? Why did the coach call that? Let it be on the players. Um, so, yeah, I don't think they're going nowhere fast. He said, uh, this team is underperformed. I agree with that. He said, this is an 8-4 and four team that's playing like a 4-8 and eight team. Um, so, the, but... But they are they are eight and four, so uh, like I said earlier, as frustrating as they have been, you can't take their record away from them because their record is they they won eight games and they lost four, so that's that. Uh, offensively, we flat out suck. Oh, the offense has been a big yikes. Uh, I like Lamar to be more vocal, and he's too relaxed and calm. Is he? Um, Lamar, when stuff is going bad, Lamar gets pretty worked up. 
If stuff is going good, he's on the field smiling and on the sideline smiling, having a good time. So I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, oh, well, you did explain it. He said uh, he needs to have more say in the offense, like instead of always listening to Roman. To call it like to call his own stuff, if that's what you mean, okay, I feel you. Defensively, the, <coughs> excuse me, the run game is straight, it is. But the pass defense sucks, and every time the defense gets cooked, they play sloppy. Well, I mean, when they, I, I would say when they play sloppy, they get cooked. I would say it the other way around. Um, and then uh, coaching is beyond suspect. And, and that's the the adjustments just they got to be better that's it so again everything is uh, well most stuff like i said it's fixable they just got to fix it next question came from terry he said what's up in graven hope you and the fam are chilling I wanted to ask if you think the ravens utilized tavon young more if we could have had a better chance of stopping the passing offense and lowered marlo's chances of getting hurt because i know he was active to play yesterday but i didn't see him on the field the passing defense did so good against the steelers in the first half then just lost juice in the second half his snap percentage yesterday was 37 percent and Marlowe's was 100%. Now, I know that Marlowe was injured going into the game, but if we knew he was injured and didn't practice all week, we could have minimized snaps for Tavon. So, and Greg, do you think if we increased Tay-Tay's snap percentage in the Steelers game, we could have done a better job against the pass and minimized Marlowe's chances of getting hurt? No. Um, I, I don't think you can ever minimize somebody's chances of getting hurt. The only way you can minimize somebody's chances of getting hurt is if they don't play at all. That's it. That's it. If, uh, uh, if any player that suits up, they got a chance to get hurt on any single play. Any single play. So, and with Tay Tay, he was hurting. Well, physical. Well, so he was sick. He was, that's what they said. He was, they said he was really sick. Cause yeah, he played, but then he stopped playing. But so I, I don't think any, they could have any. They couldn't have prevented Marlon Humphrey's injury. It's just one of those things that just unfortunately happened. Next question came from my boy Jonathan. He said, Angry, when tough game against the Steelers, we knew coming into this game it was going to be a tough one. I love the decision by John Harbaugh to go for it. Love the quick thinking by Lamar. I heard the analysts say if the ball would have been higher and stuff, I disagree. Lamar, great quick thinking and throw. Now, my question is, do you think it was the right decision for that play call uh, to be to Andrews? I went back and looked at the Vikings game, and we called the same play with Pat Ricard, and he adjusted to the ball and disguised that route to perfection. Maybe that's why they put him at wide receiver so much. <laughs> and Andrews has a tough time adjusting. He's 50-50 in big games. Uh, but with the game on the line like that, you, you think they should have used Ricard in that situation and had Andrews sit in the middle of coverage as a decoy, or will you stick to that play? Thank you. Um, I thought it, it, it was a great play. It was the, again, I, I didn't like the two-point conversion. I didn't like them to go for that. But the play that they called, it was great. Um, but, yeah, I, I do see that. Like, if Mark Andrews, because everybody knows in the red zone, oh, Mark Andrews. That's Mark Andrews in Hollywood. Those are Lamar's guys in the red zone. Though He will look for them. He will find them. And he will get them the ball in the red zone. Um, so if Mark Andrews is out there, you, then you would know, like, all right, these Steelers, they're going to be watching him. But if Pat Ricard was out there, too, um, yeah, he would. I don't think they would have been watching him as much. But, yeah, the play call, it was again, it was a good play call. It's just, hey, when you uh, let T.J. Watt come in untouched, <laughs> it's, yeah, that, that is going to throw some things off. Uh, and then Mark Andrews, he slowed up just a tiny bit, and, and that slow up was enough for the ball to be a little more ahead of him and led to an incomplete. I mean, and he, he had dropped three passes earlier that game anyway, so that didn't help any, but it is what it is, man. Next question came from my boy Ricky B. He said, what's up, Engraven? With so many injuries coming on both sides of the ball, do you think it has something to do with our offensive and defensive scheme? No, I, I don't. But anyway, he said, Wink plays very aggressive in our offense uh, in ground and pound, even though it hasn't been effective this year. Um, no, because that's how they were last year. Wink's always been aggressive, and we ain't have nearly as many injuries last year. And this Ravens offense, they have been predicated on a run. Now, they haven't been able, like you said, they haven't been able to run like that this year, but you still see all these injuries. So, no, I don't think it has anything to do with scheme at all. Uh, and he said, my other question is, how much of the offense, uh, offensive slowness can we put on the offensive line, Lamar Jackson, Greg Roman, or injuries? <laughs> all of it. <laughs> like, all of it. All of those are factors in the offenses, just how slow they are. Uh, he said, when listening to talk shows, they seem to put it on the scheme, saying we don't have answers for the blitz. Thank you, Engraven, for all that you do. I don't do nothing. All we do is just talk. I don't do nothing special. But anyway, um... Having answers for the blitz, that for me, that starts at the top. That starts with the coaching. Because coaching, they're the ones that are supposed to put plays together in order for their players to be successful against all kinds of different situations. Also, 
Um, if they come up with a new, to come up against a new situation, they see something that they may have not seen before. Okay, you as a coach, you as the leader, you're supposed to figure this thing out. Be like, all right, this is what we need to do because you are the one that tells eleven men what they need to do on any given play. Uh, so, in my opinion, um, I think that that goes uh, to the coaching staff. Um, his other question. He said, recently, I already sent an email to you with questions, but I have a few more. Watching the presser after the game, Mike Tomlin was asked about the call to go for two at the end of the game. He stated something about Ravens being an analytics team and they are predictable. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, it's true. I mean, we, Ravens, they, they were one of the first. Now, being a Ravens fan, this may be why. But they were one of the first teams that I felt like I, I heard really went hard with the analytics. Because these like, they love analytics. Oh, yeah, Eric DaCosta, that's what Eric DaCosta, he started it off. Because this team, when Eric De, before Eric DaCosta took over, you ain't never heard the word analytics before in football like that. But when Eric DaCosta took over, he said it in his opening press conference. He said that, he, he said something about analytics. I forgot exactly what it was, but I know he spoke about that in depth and in detail. Um, so, Eric DaCosta, so that, that's, what, that's analytics coming from the top. So, if it's coming from the top, then it's going to trickle down to everybody else. So, yes, I, I can understand why Mike Tomlin said that. He said, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think teams know exactly what's coming? Well, in, in certain situations, they know Ravens are going to be very aggressive. They know they're going to be very aggressive. Um, and if the analytics say, hey, you got a 53% chance versus a 47% chance of converting this uh, or winning this game, if you convert this fourth down from your own 42-yard uh, line, then, yeah, you know they're, they're going to go with that and they're going to go for it. So, I, I just... I think it's just I don't think Mike Tomlin like said anything special or said anything like out of the blue or anything like that. Well, it's it's true. Now, if it was that predictable, why was Mark Andrews wide open? Next question came from my boy Mark. He said the loss to the Steelers was one of the worst offensively called games in the in the Lamar Jackson era. Don't get me wrong, I love Project Pat, but there's no reason he should be moving in motion so much, set to run goal routes and be moved. Out wide. I feel you. I, I agree 1000%. Anyway, he said in an interview last week, Ricard mentioned he was nursing a knee injury. It seems Greg Roman is overly relying on two people on the offense Lamar and Project Pat. Lamar is put in incredibly bad positions on nearly every pass, poor, poor pass blocking, and slow developing receiver routes. And that equals sacks, tackle for loss, or errant throws. Mm. With all that in mind, what are some realistic offensive coordinator replacements for G-Row this season? Here's hoping Lamar won't be the most sacked quarterback in Ravens history. Ooh. Um, replacements for G-Row. I'm, I'm going, uh, again, T, T. Martin or Keith Williams. That's what I'm going with because, again, they, they don't have any experience as offensive coordinators in the NFL. And I know some people may look at that like, oh, why would you go with somebody who's inexperienced? Well, that because, that's because nobody will be able to see what's coming. Nobody will be able to be, look at, oh, when, when, well, when they coach for this team, when they ran the offense for this team, oh, that's what they like to do. This is what they oh. – no, you can't do that because they haven't been offensive coordinators in the NFL before. So, but at the same time, you can take everything that Greg Roman did good and he'd be like, okay, we'll keep that. We'll keep that in the scheme. And the scheme doesn't have to – it doesn't have to be completely revamped. And Oh, man, oh, my, my fault. It doesn't have to be completely revamped and completely changed and completely thrown out. No. But it can be fine-tuned and adjusted to have more success and have new success, and it can be more innovative. Next question came from my boy, Jower25. He said, first things first, keep up the good work on YouTube. My dad and I realized that when the offense was desperate, uh, that w when they need to score at the end, but start off games particularly slow. Uh, anything the Ravens should switch up to get that flow going on offense, possibly no huddle. The games are getting hard to watch. <laughs> The games are getting hard to watch, but I've been locked in since I was five years old. 21 now and 22 on the 24th. But blessings, and let's see if I make it in the video. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Um, what can the Ravens do to just get the flow going on offense? I say more short passes. More short, short passes early and just really build Lamar Jackson's confidence up early. Because you got to feel like right now, his confidence is not the highest it could be. Not to say that it's low, 
but it, it's, it can't be the highest that it could possibly be. But if you get him completing a couple passes and whatnot, complete a couple short passes, mix in some little screens in there, here and there, and, um, yeah, just get that short to intermediate passing game going consistently, and then that, that could build him up, and, and that could get the offense moving. That could keep them in a rhythm, get them in a little flow early, and it could do wonders. Next question came from my guy Kelvin. He said, hey, long time sub. Appreciate it. Wanted to know if you can do a breakdown of our practice squad cornerbacks since at least one of them will be needed for the stretch run with Marlon out for the year. I was looking at Mozzie Wilkins. He was a three-star going to USF. Played two years for Tampa with a deep young secondary there. Had a really good PFF grade coming out of college. Think he may have something being useful. What are your thoughts? Oh, man. Kelvin, I'm, I'm going to have to run this back uh, later on because I... I'm not sure of everybody who's on that practice squad. And just the, the timing of this is tough because this has been an extremely busy, crazy busy week. But I feel like every week is like that. But this one, for sure, has been a little busy because I've been doing a, a little more extra stuff on the side. Uh, but anyway, um, I have to run this back another time but i did have to acknowledge your question in here so you know that i ain't forget about you and it's on record next question came from movie he said hope you had a good weekend and enjoyed this embarrassing loss against the steelers <laughs> with our unhealthy and dangerous season do you think we should hit devin duvenay more often well yeah he has certainly been getting involved more often so they already been doing that do you think raven should use devin duvenay like the 49ers use debo yeah for sure we've uh, talked about that a lot and hope you enjoyed the game even though it was a bad game yes it certainly was he also said uh what do you think of the defense lately personally i think they're playing great do you think patrick queen and tyus bowser are playing on an elite level um well tyus bowser they he's certainly been stepping it up a lot um elite not elite yet not, i wouldn't say elite um because elite is just when you are cons consistent force and, and nobody can stop you you just on a whole nother level he's been playing really good yeah, I, I can't say elite yet. Um, and the defense, uh, they I feel like the defense has been playing pretty good recently, but they just not getting the help. So when they keep playing good, playing good, playing good, but they're not getting any help at all, then it ends up making them look bad because they end up unfolding. And the last question on this episode came from my guy Javo. He said, what are your real thoughts on Lamar? Well, we talked about that in the, in the video where we said, what's wrong with Lamar Jackson? And we went over everything that we feel like is going on with him right now. But we do know that he can also bounce back. And this, this usually doesn't last for this long. Um, so we know that it's just something that's extra like funky going on. But you know that he's going to bounce back. And when he bounces back, everybody can be like, whoa. So hopefully that can be this week against the Browns. But anyway. He said, uh, Lamar needs to stop looking for the big play every play and needs to learn check downs, utilize all his weapons, and throw the ball away. Lamar needs to spread the ball around to his other receivers. How many times uh, he, has he thrown to Sammy or Bateman against the Steelers? Um, I think Sammy Watkins had one catch. Bateman had one drop. Uh, but, yeah, I think that was it. Anyway, he said, Lamar makes dumb decisions and only plays great when it's time to catch up. I was listening to Romo when he played when we played the Steelers and loved the way he dissected Lamar's game and how he should have reacted on certain plays. Now it's it's see with that and and Tony Tony Romo could be right. He could be right like because Lamar missed some plays that were right in front of him. He, he he missed some stuff. But it's so easy, like it's easy for us to dissect and analyze and stuff like that. It's easy for commentators to dissect and analyze like that, especially when we're not right there in the heat of things. When we're not right there on the field, it's much easier to be from where we're sitting at, like, oh, man, you should have done this. Oh, you should have done that. But you don't know what's going on in their head. Um, you don't know what's, what's going on on the field. You don't know what's going on between them and the coach. We just don't know a lot. But, yeah, Lamar, but bottom line, he still got to step up regardless, though. I uh, would love if Lamar worked with Tony Romo or Peyton Manning instead of his other QB coach. We stayed in second or third long downs because instead of Lamar throwing the ball away, he will rather throw up a prayer ball for a pick or scramble all in the backfield and try to outrun 11 players on his own. I think it's just more, a lot of times that's just pressure too. It's, it's pressure too. Uh, I think Lamar does not have big trust for his offensive line. He doesn't. And I mean, can, can you blame him? If I'm standing back, if I was standing back there and I had the, the first half of the year that the Ravens had, 
I wouldn't have big dreams for them either. Uh, but anyway, he said, sorry for this long question slash rant, but had to get this off my chest. LOL. Hope all is good with you and the fam. And just like our whole team, I'm out. <laughs> Shout out to Graven.